Happy Halloween viewers, Brendan here. How exactly does one measure scariness in a video game? You might say it's the number of times you jumped out of your seat due to a jump scare, or your blood pressure when you're about to turn that one corner in that one particularly dark hallway. The problem is, spookiness is subjective. One man's Freddy Fazbear is another man's Barney the Dinosaur. For me, the scariest game I've ever played was Hideo Kojima's demo for the oh-so-unfortunately-canceled Silent Hills. That's right, folks. I'm talking about P friggin' T. This demo's excruciatingly oppressive atmosphere, nail-biting gameplay, and fourth-wall-breaking scares had me literally paralyzed with fear. Imagine my surprise when I heard a small indie studio was making a spiritual sequel to P.T. as a full-length game. Could Layers of Fear actually live up to its terrifying inspiration? Spoiler alert, no, not really. In Layers of Fear, you play as a mad artist stumbling around his house in the quest to complete his masterpiece. Along the way, the story will unfold, allowing you to slowly piece together the circumstances surrounding the protagonist's insanity. The game does look pretty slick, and it has that nice dark and stormy night kind of atmosphere that's perfect for Halloween. The Unity game engine continues to surprise me, this time actually coming pretty close to emulating PT's crisp graphics. Now, if you've ever played Amnesia The Dark Descent, the gameplay should feel familiar. Clicking and dragging allows you to slowly creak open doors, throw switches, and rotate objects. However, this gameplay style, other than adding to the game's atmosphere, isn't really used for anything substantial save for a few disappointingly light puzzles. This brings me to the real question here, which is, was the game scary? Well, yes and no. Playing Layers of Fear made me realize why PT really works, and that's because PT has a little thing called restraint. Even though it's a short experience, the demo takes its time building tension and atmosphere through its slow pace, making sure that when a scare does happen, it takes you by surprise. The spooks and jump scares in Layers of Fear do emulate those found in PT, and many of them are quite creative, but they come one after another, just like clockwork, with little buildup. The game tries way too hard to fit in as many scares as possible throughout its suffocatingly linear experience that it never allows you a moment to catch your breath, completely nullifying the element of suspense and by the end, I was effectively predicting each spook before it happened. This is coupled with the fact that there are no consequences for anything that happens to you in the game, meaning you can't die, no matter how hard you try. Once you realize you're invincible about an hour and a half in, the malevolent forces start to feel less threatening and more like haunted house employees who aren't allowed to touch you for liability reasons. This game also does that thing where the house changes its layout as you traverse through it in a sort of disorienting, non-Euclidean sort of way. I really like this element in games like the Stanley Parable, Antichamber, and of course, PT. But once again, the keyword here is restraint, as Layers of Fear uses this device so frequently that the charm of it all was lost all too soon, and the constant disorientation became pretty annoying towards the end of the game. In conclusion, while the game has great visuals and a wide variety of jump scares to witness, Layers of Fear lacks that subtlety that makes for truly great horror games. Now remember, I stated before that scariness is subjective. So while I didn't personally find the game all that scary, I can guarantee that some of you will. So don't let me stop you if this game piques your interest. In fact, I uh, know a few YouTubers who make their living off jump scare fests like this. Unfortunately for the game though, its critic today is me, which is why HUD gives Layers of Fear two stars out of five. Thanks for watching everyone. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more spooky reviews just like this one. Until then, this is Brendan, and this has been Heads Up Display.